tears, all of the tears that you cried. I could ready to carry you alone. Do I even try?
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Cornerstone Church. We're going to join our hearts together, worship, lift up our praises. Let's join in. So when you move, when you move, darkness runs for
Well, good morning, everyone. Again, we just welcome you to Cornerstone Church this morning, especially if it's your first time joining us either in person or online. So glad to have you. This morning, we gather with one purpose, and that's to worship the name of Jesus in this place and to pursue him as his people. And when we worship, uh, we just know that we are the people of God in the presence of God, pouring out the praises of God. That's our purpose this morning, is to gather and collectively pursue after him and his goodness and his calling, his unique calling for our lives. So this morning we seek him and we want to draw closer to him and we seek his will for us as he is writing an unbelievable, unique story for every person in this room, every person watching online. So we want to pursue after that this morning. And so my prayer and my hope for you is that you would lean into that, that you would have your heart open for what the Lord wants to do in this time. So as we continue and worship, I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to continue worshiping our Lord. Father, we come before you this morning recognizing you as a holy and good God, a God that turns our worship into revival, a God that does new things a God of power and might, and we don't want to underestimate your abilities this morning as we step into your presence, as we step into your throne room collectively. We just take a posture of humbleness, and we just come before the cross of Christ that you so incredibly and generously would send your son Jesus to this earth for us. And you made a way for us to have real connection with you. This morning, we want to take full advantage of the communion that can take place in this morning. The communion that can take place between our hearts connecting to you. So would our worship be honoring to you and a pleasing aroma to you this morning? Would our songs lift up and reach you in a, in a way that, that glorifies you and magnifies you for who you are? that our hearts, that we would put you at the highest place, that we would magnify your praises in our own hearts this morning. And then we pray, amen. Let's continue and sing.
sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Come on, church. Sing a little louder. I sing a little louder. Oh, I'm going to sing a little louder. I sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemy. I sing a little louder. Oh, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. I sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. Oh, in the presence of my enemy. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. Oh, my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Oh, heaven comes to fight for me. I sing a little louder. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm.
we just thank you that your name is above every name, God. Above sickness and disease, above addiction, God, above poverty. Your name is higher and great, God. And you are always in control, God. Even when our world seems like it's spinning out of control, God, you are still on your throne. And we give you praise and glory today in this place because we can come into your house, God, and worship you unashamed, God. And we just thank you and we ask you to be in the service today. Just walk, God, down the aisles, Lord, and touch every heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Cornerstone Church. My name is Matt Mobley. I'm the lead pastor here. I'm so glad that you have joined us for worship today. I'm standing out here outside the front entrance and behind me is our church parking lot. And I'm so excited to tell you that one week from today, October the 24th from 4 to 6 p.m., Trunk or Treat is back. We took a year off last year due to COVID, but you all have stepped up. We've had some volunteers to bring forth uh, the willingness to to uh, share their trunks. And so come out next Sunday, four to six. We're gonna have truck or treat. We're gonna have food. We're gonna have great fellowship. Bring your family, bring your friends, bring your kids. Today is a very special day and we have a special guest with us, Pastor Peter from Uganda. He is the pastor of Gaba Community Church in Uganda. We've partnered with him through Africa Renewal Ministries for the last 10 years or more. Many of you have sponsored children through Africa Renewal Ministries. And uh, Rusty Hudson, the founding pastor of this church, told me that Pastor Peter, he is the Rick Warren of Uganda. That's his words. And so I'm so excited to give him the opportunity to preach to us today, to continue our Daniel series. Pastor Peter is gonna be preaching from Daniel chapter six, the story of the lion's den. So I encourage you to open your Bibles Give Pastor Peter a warm cornerstone welcome this morning as we continue our series on the book of Daniel. Morning, Cornerstone. It's exciting for me to be here. Uh, I've been here, the last time I was here, say, several years ago. It's, uh, it's a little bit of a while, but I'm so excited to be here. Pastor, thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to share uh, the word with uh, God's people. Um, I'm excited to be here, as you've heard. My name is Peter. I'm a pastor in Uganda, as you've heard. And uh, this church has been an amazing partner with us for very, very many years. It's, uh, it's been a very beautiful journey with you. And because of you, we have actually had the relationship that has ended up in planting two churches in a community called Buloba. And in that very community, uh, you as a church have actually sponsored hundreds and hundreds of children, and you've enabled these kids to go to school. Uh, through this partnership, uh, you have actually drilled water wells. Uh, you have sent many, many, many missionary teams, uh, which has been a huge blessing for us. And because of you, we actually were able to start Cornerstone Medical Clinic on the campus of Africa Renew University. I want to say what you have done has actually transformed and brought so much life, restoration of life because of your partnership and because of your generosity. You have been an amazing partner to us and uh, you have been involved in the university 
uh, in many, many ways uh, through the mission teams that you've been sending, uh, through financially supporting. Uh, actually, you support as, the, as a church, you actually pay the salary of the chaplain who is also the pastor on the church that we planted on the campus. I cannot thank you enough for your generosity and your love for Uganda and your love for the kids. Now, at the end of the service, uh, there's going to be, at the end of my speaking, there's going to be a video that talks about child sponsorship. It's a story of a young lady who actually grew up in our program uh, over the years. And uh, because of someone here in this United States supporting this girl, she became a teacher and a future was born in her life. She is a picture of hundreds of stories around the country of Uganda of the people, of the young men and young women who have gone through our hands and because of the support of God's people, they have found a future. I'm actually one of the beneficiaries of this kind of a program because actually my son, his name is James, he's 27, he got married four weeks ago. And the girl he married, her name is Gloria. Gloria grew up in the child sponsorship program. She was brought uh, up by a single mother, four kids. Uh, the, the, the father abandoned them. And uh, they brought these children to my wife at, that, at the time. She was the one running the program. And they, they entered the program. And several years later on, she now works with uh, a law firm. And my son found her. So I always say, I'm a beneficiary of the sponsorship program, which is beautiful. So I thank God so very much for, for that. So at the end of this service, you're going to be given the opportunity to, again, help sponsor more children. And I want to say this. By doing so, you're making a difference because many of these would otherwise not have an opportunity to find an education, to find hope, but also to find a purpose in life. And many of you have done that over the years, and through you, we have seen the goodness of God. So thank you very much for what you do. And today, I am so excited that I have a message that I'm going to share with you, and it's a message on Daniel. Actually, if there were people that I love in the Bible, I love the story of the man called Daniel. Daniel well, is an inspiration to me every time I read about them. So uh, I read about him. So I'm very, very excited to be able to share uh, from Daniel chapter 6 as our pastor has just informed us today. But before I do, can I pray? Uh, Father, thank you for the opportunity to share your word with your people here at Cornerstone. What an opportunity for us to come before your word to hear you speaking to us, to encourage us, to make us better men and better women, but also better followers of the Lord Jesus. So Lord, use this message to encourage us, to motivate us, and to make us stronger and more courageous as we follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, Daniel chapter 6 is where we are this, uh, this morning, and... Um, it's a very beautiful chapter, and I believe most of you have ever read this, uh, this, uh, this book, and I believe you are reading it because this is where you are uh, in this series. So chapter 6 is a story where it begins with, with, uh, with Daniel and other leaders being promoted to leadership. Now, many of you know that Daniel served so many kings. And it is told that at this time, Daniel is old. He's an old man. He has served so many kings. And he had been a leader. He had been a servant, uh, serving in this kingdom for very many years. He had served through many kings. So an old man, a person who has been able to follow his God through all this season and through all these years. And here we find that he's now serving under the king called Darius. The Bible tells us in verse 1 that it pleased Darius 
to set over the kingdom 120 satraps. That's verse 1. Throughout the whole kingdom, and over them three high officials, of all the 120, three high officials, and Daniel happens to be one of them. What is very interesting is verse 3. Then this Daniel became distinguished above all other high officials, satraps, because of an excellent spirit that was in him. And the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Yes, he was on the top three, but the king wanted to actually elevate him because of the character that he had. Then the high officials and the satraps sought to find a grant for complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom. But they could find no ground for complaint or any fault because he was faithful and no error or fault was found in him. What a testimony from this man. And the first statement that I want to give us as I share the word of God today is that our character is our witness. Our character is our witness. Now, many of us are not pastors, are not evangelists, are not preachers like Pastor Matt. We find ourselves working in different capacities. We are in the marketplace. We are serving in schools. You're serving in the big university here. You serve in areas where you don't have the opportunity to stand up and preach the gospel like some of us have the opportunity. But all of us have been called of God to be a witness to who God is. We have all been called by God to share our faith, to be able to speak on behalf of our God. But we don't usually have the platform or the microphone. But the way God has designed it is that it is through our lives that we find the opportunity to actually share our faith. It is through our lives. And it so happens that this man, Daniel, is a big example of that. He is serving in the kingdom which did not know anything about the God of heaven, the God of Israel. They served all kinds of gods. So Daniel had to be a man who stands up and becomes a witness to the God of heaven. How did he do that? The Bible tells us that when he had the opportunity to serve, he served in such a way that people will see the God of heaven in him. Let's just look at the, a number of things through this portion. The Bible says he distinguished himself. He distinguished himself. The Bible says he had an excellent spirit. The Bible says he was without blame or fault at all. The Bible says he was faithful. No error was found in the way he conducted himself and in the way he executed his work. There are several things we learn from this. Distinguished himself means that he had a way of performing his duties that was unmatched. He was so good and he was so skilled. The way we do work has a way of showing who we are. So many people go to work, but they say, I was told that I need to report at this time and I need to depart at this time. So they go to work just to spend time. But this man, the Bible says, he was distinguished. He did it so well that he was able to be noticed. He performed his work very well. 
And then the Bible says he had an excellent spirit. When I read this, what comes to my mind, he had a positive attitude. He had a positive attitude. So much so that it could actually be observed and it was a testimony to who he was without blame. What that means, he was so careful in the way he conducted himself that it became a testimony at the place of work. I would look at the quality of the work he did. Attitude and now quality. And then the Bible says he was faithful. He was a man of integrity. No corruption was found in him. And then the Bible says there was no error. Competent in the way he did his work. Now friends, that is the way we Christians in the marketplace should behave. We should behave like that. And when we do so, the people will wonder what kind of people we are. And that will open a door for us to share our faith and to tell people who we believe and whom we belong to. The Bible says the king noticed. When we do what we do well, the people in leadership notice us. And they want to find out the secret of our lives. And we all know that our secret is this. We found a savior who changed our lives and he made us who we are. We are different from the people of the world. And as the portion say, promotion is always inevitable. I always challenge my people back home. I tell them, you know what? You want promotion? Promotion does not come because you've spent a long time at the place of work. Promotion doesn't come because you have all these kind of degrees on you. Promotion comes when you do your work well. And promotion comes when you are a testimony at the place of work. The second statement I have for our message today is our integrity may not always be celebrated. The first one is our character is our witness. The second statement is our integrity may not always be celebrated. Verse 4 to 9 explains this very well. When this man of God started behaving so well and doing his work so well, the people around him, his colleagues were not very impressed with the way he did work. Many times we think that when we do well, people are going to celebrate us. But that's not always the way. And it's all because the spirit in you is usually rejected by the people in the world. They feel offended because you are living well and you are living a life of testimony. Verse 5, the Bible says, These men said, we shall not find any ground of complaint against this Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. It means that they started looking around, how can we pin this guy to a mistake he did? And they could find none. So they said, okay, we know that this man believes in the God of heaven. And the best way for us to get him is to actually try to derail him through his faith. We often expect people around us to celebrate us, to cheer us on when we do a good job. That does not always happen. So do not expect non-believers to have the same heart like your heart. Do not expect that. 
What is natural to you as a Christian is not natural to those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not natural. Don't expect them to be very happy with what you do. Usually, jealousy will start. Bad feelings will come, especially when they know that your boss is celebrating you because of your character and because of the spirit that you have. But you should never stop doing good. You should never stop serving well. Why? Because it is your testimony. It is where people will find and start knowing who God is. The book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23, this is what the Bible says. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as if you're working for the Lord, not for human masters. Colossians 3 and verse 24 says, Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ that you're serving. This is interesting. When you serve well at the place of work, you are actually serving Jesus. Many of us think we serve Jesus when we come on Sunday morning and we are ushers and we are the worship team. We are doing children's ministry. Let me tell you this. The biggest ministry for every Christian is actually not on Sunday morning. Your greatest ministry is out from Monday to Saturday. That's your biggest ministry. I always tell people back home that church is like going to a a workshop to be fixed. Church is like going to a gas station to refill. It is like going to a hospital to be fixed. But real ministry begins on Monday morning when you go out there and live for Jesus Christ. That's when real ministry begins. So that's why the Bible says, whatever you do, do it with all your heart. And the Bible says, Daniel had an excellent spirit. Your heart matters, your attitude. Why? Why? Because he says, you know that you are serving the Lord. When you serve in that place, of, in your marketplace, in your place, you are actually serving Jesus. When you smile, you are smiling because of Jesus. When you, uh, you arrive on time and when you accomplish your tasks, we are doing it for God. And he says this. It's not because we are going to get a salary. That's good when they give it to us. But he says, we have a reward. And that reward is going to happen when we get to meet our Jesus. So we are in ministry from Monday to Saturday. Now let me go to the next statement of my message. And the next one is, we will always be tested for our faith. Now, this is the part that Christians don't like very much, but this is a calling that God has given to us. You all know this story that it ended up that Daniel had to find himself in the lion's den. But how did he? Because these guys went and told the king, we need to make sure that everyone worships you, the king. And they knew very well that Daniel will never do that because he loved his God and he served his God. So the Bible tells us that the high officials sought a ground and the ground this time was that Daniel is not worshipping the king. He's worshipping another king who happens to be the king of heaven. Verse 10, the Bible says that when Daniel knew that the document had been signed, Signed that everyone should worship the king, he went to his house where he had his windows in his upper chamber open towards Jerusalem. He faced Jerusalem 
whenever he prayed. Now, friends, he went to his house, but they were looking out for him. They said, we want to pin him down. We want to find fault. So, friends, sometimes we wonder, why does God allow tests to come our way? Why does God allow trouble to come to us when we are faithfully serving God? Now, friends, the Lord has decided that tests are part of the package. Trials and tribulations are part of the package. So the Bible says that they got hold of him. And when they got hold of him, the king wasn't very happy about it because he loved the man. And he knew he worships God of heaven, but now he could not turn against, against his own word. So friends, suffering is part of the journey. And it's not a very easy journey, but it's part of the journey of our walk, especially suffering for our faith. It is part of the journey. How did Daniel walk and how comes, how did he get the strength to keep on keeping on? The Bible says he turned to his God when he knew that issues had come up. He's going to be in trouble, he actually went to God. So my question to you this morning, when life becomes hard, where do you run? When trouble comes, where do you go? Do you go on your knees or you start complaining? You complain against God and against everyone. But the Bible says he stood by prayer. Humanly, we cannot stand in the midst of tough situations, but prayer is the way that builds our inner man. Today, Christians have a hard time praying. I found that Christians in America love to pray, love to talk about prayer, but they find it so hard to pray. Have you realized that? It's very easy to talk about prayer to go to seminars on prayer. But real prayer is usually very difficult. So the question I have today is, how is your prayer life? When is the last time you dedicated a, a small piece of your day to prayer? Have you ever dedicated three days and you said, I'm going to fast and pray because I need God to do some big things in my life? But you all know the book of Daniel is talking about prayer. It's talking about, uh, you know, you remember the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All these guys were people of prayer. So tests come and they say, we are going to throw you in the den of lions. But he was strong because he prayed. I come from a country where we had a man called Idi Amin. Have you ever heard of Idi Amin? Yeah, those of you who are older, you would have heard about him. <laughs> he lived in Uganda in 1970. He was a, a ruler in Uganda, 1971 to 1979. I was very young when he became a leader. This man, middle way, of his ruler, rulership, he decided that Christians should, evangelical Christians should not exist. So he just announced that you don't exist. That was a very difficult time. So many of the Christians uh, had to go underground and started house churches at the time. It was only the mainline churches, the Catholic church, and the Anglican church that stayed, and of course, Islam. The church that I accepted the Lord from, that's the church that actually decided to have a prayer meeting, not knowing that this guy was very serious. So one Sunday 
one morning, I don't think it was a Sunday, they came and surrounded the building. There were 300 Christians in this place in a prayer meeting. And they started beating up all these people and they, they asked them, if you want to leave, you have to deny your Jesus. And many of them said, no, we are going to follow God. They ended up in prison. They actually spent months and months in prison. It was such a very difficult time. There was a, a vice president of Idi Amin who was supposed to sign that these people would be killed. But God, in his own miraculous way, this man who was driving from one city to the other, and he fell on an accident, he ended up being flown out of the country, and somehow God spared the 300 Christians. I'm saying this to tell you that after these people got out of prison, after Idi Amin had been kicked out of the country, the church which had gone underground, actually they were about, this church had about uh, four, 50 congregations at the time. After Idi Amin's era, when the people were, came out of the lockdown, there was 400 congregations. What a testimony to what God can do. When the church was in trouble, the church was growing. That's what God can do. So friends, the Lord uses tests to purify our lives. He uses tests to grow our stamina. The Lord uses tests and trials to actually purify us, set us apart, but also to use that to grow his own church. So that's why the Bible says, count it joy when you go through trouble. I don't know what you're going through, but count it joy when you go through trouble. Now, we all know what happened at the end of the journey. This man, Daniel, he survived the lions. When the king woke up in the morning, he went to find out what is happening to Daniel, and he called his name. The Bible tells us he had Daniel alive. Why? Because God is such a powerful God that he can even stop the mouth of lions. The God we serve is a miracle-working God. And I've seen him doing great and mighty things in the country where I come from. So friends, when trials and tribulations come, stay firm on the Lord. Let you pray and stand strong because your God is faithful. He's going to keep you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to help you to stand because he's a faithful God. So the Lord will always triumph over his enemies. Now that triumph may cause some pain to you, but at the end of the day, people will know that there is a God who rules and reigns. Friends, this is a message to the church in America today. You have had freedom of worship, but things are changing. Are you able to stand when those tough days come, will you be able to stand as a testimony to the goodness and the glory of God? May the story of Daniel be an example to you that when we stand, the Lord will stand with us and his name will be glorified. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you for the story of Daniel. And for the opportunity that we have as your children to live for you and to serve you. Lord, I pray for men and women who are here today who may be going through trials, tests, and tribulation. Will you give us the strength to stand and to walk with you? Lord, I pray for those of us who are saying, I am such a fearful person. Lord, I pray for courage that we will stand. Lord, we thank you for Cornerstone. May this church be a church which walks the walk and which lives 
for what they believe. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I remember when I received your first letter. Your kind, encouraging words sunk deep in my heart. I knew you believed in me and were praying for me. But I wasn't sure what your sponsorship would mean to me for the rest of my life. But now I understand. Growing up in Uganda was difficult, as my father abandoned us when I was little. But my mother worked hard to provide for me and my brothers. The sponsorship staff shared the love of Christ with me and my family. They invited us to church where we had the gospel and gave our lives to Jesus Christ. Our lives were changed forever. And because of you, I had the opportunity to go to school, which provided a hot meal every day. I fell in love with math and science and dreamed of being a teacher each day. After I graduated from the program, I started to become a teacher so I can help children learn how to read and write, discover all that God has in store for them. I pray for them daily, share the love of Christ with them, and encourage them to pursue their hopes and dreams. I'm married now to a godly man, and we have a daughter, Naomi. I look at her and marvel at the beautiful miracle that she is. I'm so thankful that we can care for her, send her to school, and give her the opportunity to chase her dreams. I want to thank you for sponsoring me so many years ago, for praying for me, encouraging me with scripture, and believing in me. Your help made it possible for me to become the woman that I am today. I love you and thank you. Just extend to Pastor Peter your appreciation for the word he brought to us today. <laughs> what a special way to, uh, to continue the Daniel series. What a powerful example of living as a witness for your faith and uh, through experiences that he shared about that happened in his own country. And just thank you for that wonderful word today. Uh, as many of you here have sponsored kids uh, through the African Renewal Ministries, and this began 10 plus years ago, and many of those kids actually have graduated the program. Uh, we have a table set up here. There's going to be some of those who have been to Uganda will be there manning the table as you leave from worship today. If you'd like to uh, go over there and visit and learn about what is involved in child sponsorship, we have 30, 30 kids over there, and my hope is that by the end of today, all of them will have a sponsor. Um, Molly and I, we uh, just had a child to graduate from uh, Compassion. We sp uh, uh, sponsored two kids through Compassion, and one has just graduated, and so it's a great chance for us to uh, sponsor a child. And so just consider that today. Appreciate all of you being here. Appreciate your faithful generosity, those who give online. If you are here in the building, you can give as you leave today. There are baskets in the back. Appreciate your faithful giving that helps us to do all that we do. Today is part four of the Daniel series. Next week, next Sunday, is part five. And if you are interested in Bible prophecy, okay, you should be here next Sunday. I'm going to tackle the parts of Daniel many pastors fear to tread. We are going Daniel chapter 7, 8, and 9. And so um, bring your notebooks next Sunday and... Uh, Probably you'll have lots of questions and bring those as well. So I hope to see you next Sunday, October the 24th, as we continue 
in the series of Daniel. Thanks so much for being here today. If you'll just stand, let me just offer a quick prayer for all of us. God, we're so grateful to be together in the house of God today. We're grateful for a witness from halfway around the world and to be partners uh, with Pastor Peter and African Renewal Ministries and what's happening. Grateful for him being here. He's been, he's been to California. He's been to Texas. And, and to spend time with us, such an honor. So we pray for blessing upon his work. We pray for safe travels for him back to uh, Uganda. And God, we're grateful to have partners. We are partners together in the gospel, together, working toward a common goal. And I pray, Father, that we would be faithful stewards of the much that you have entrusted to us, that we would use it for the advancement of the kingdom that lasts forever and ever and ever. And we offer this prayer to the one who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ, our Savior. We pray in his name. Amen. Thanks for being here. Go in peace. A dark space, a shelter to hide it. Do you spy on this time? Never thought you'd find me where I hide. I'm such a lonely host. Keep you in view, let you close the no joke. Is there a simple hope to keep?